A one-page profile is a record of what matters to someone. It has three sections, what people appreciate about the person, what's important to them, and what good support looks like. One-page profiles are developed through conversation, but how can you do this when people don't use many words to communicate? We all communicate in different ways, and we know that not being able to talk is not the same as not having anything to say. So we can develop one-page profiles by using our best guesses, from looking for clues and talking to people who know the person well. Then we find ways to check and review this information. Looking for clues is a bit like the TV programme Through the Keyhole, where people had to guess which celebrity owned a house from looking round it. Our homes usually give clues about what and who matter to us. Doris has dementia, and when Louise met her, her home gave her lots of clues about what's important to her that Louise could then talk to her daughter Sue about as they developed her one-page profile. There were photos of her family and friends, a framed certificate, and shelves and shelves of DVDs of old films. In the same way, it was easy to tell that steam engines were important to Dennis, as he had lots and lots of old photographs of steam engines in his living room. As well as what our homes look like, our possessions are another way of learning what matters. Mohammed has learning disabilities and does not use words. He loves taking photos and he's happy to show his photos on his iPad and these give clues about the people and places that matter to him. Now that you have some clues, you want to find out who's important to the person and you might want to record this on a relationship circle. Sometimes it will just be one close family member, like Doris's daughter Sue. Sometimes there'll be several family members and friends you can talk to. If there are several people, then a one-page profile meeting with the person, family and friends is a great way to share information and start a one-page profile. The process that we use for conversations to develop one-page profiles is to ask, guess, check and then add. Ask. There are six questions that we usually use to get started with a one-page profile. But it's not about interviewing somebody, it's about using these questions to start a conversation. Guess. As we're having the conversation, we're guessing or thinking about what the information tells us about the person. Does the answer tell you something that's important to the person? Does it suggest an area that the person would benefit from help or support in? And does it tell us about a characteristic that you or others appreciate and value about the person? Then check. Check our guess with the person that you're having the conversation with. Do they agree? How would they phrase it? And finally, add. Add this to your draft one page profile. Put in as much detail as you can. Where, who with, when, how often. And avoid using words like regularly, as this means different things to different people. It could mean daily, weekly, monthly or annually. Here are some questions that are useful for getting started with one-page profiles. You can easily adapt them to ask people who know the person well, and the order doesn't matter. Sometimes it's easier to talk about appreciations at the beginning, and sometimes it's better to do it at the end of the conversation. So appreciations. We ask the person to tell us what they like, love and appreciate about the person. You can use a range of appreciation cards to help if that's useful. You can learn a lot by asking the family member or friend to share a story about a good time that they've had together. Then you can put what the person likes, appreciates or loves about the person in the appreciation section of the one page profile. Best and worst days. We usually ask the person about their best and worst days, but instead you can ask family or friends what they'd do if they were going to create the best day ever for this person. What would they do? Who would be there? Where would they go? What would they see? What would you eat and drink? What would the pace of the day be like? From the answers to this question, you can then guess, check and write the information on the draft one page profile. You can also ask what would need to happen to help the person have more good days in their life too and see if there are any actions you can set around that. Then move from a good day to imagine what would happen if you were going to create the worst day for the person, although we know you'd never do that. What would the day be like? Who would be there? What would you do? Where would you go? And then you can take that information to guess, check and write it on the draft one page profile. 
And again, you might ask, what would it take now for the person to have fewer bad days? From best and worst days, we then move to typical week. We often ask the person what they do during each weekday evening and at the weekends. And instead, we need to find out the information from other people. You could look together with the person at their diaries or weekly planners to find out as well. So find out what the person usually does each weekday, each evening and each weekend. Are there any favourite things that happen every week that the person would never want to miss? This might be favourite TV programmes, people that they always see, hobbies, interests, clubs, groups or meetings that the person always goes to. Guess what that tells us is important to the person or what support they need. Check it out with the person that you're talking to and write it on the draft one page profile. Next, you could find out what makes the person feel better if they're having a bad day. We usually ask the person, what makes you feel better when you're stressed, unhappy or upset? But instead, we need to find out from other people how the person lets us know when they're happy or upset and most importantly, what we can do about it. This information can also be written up on a communication chart. So learn what the person would do to help the person feel better. And then again, guess, check and write it on the draft one page profile. This usually gives us great information about what good support looks like. The next question is about possessions and what that tells us matters to the person. We usually ask, what would you never leave home without in your bag or pockets? Instead, we need to ask a similar question to other people. For example, if you're helping the person get ready for a day out, what would you make sure that you packed? And what would the person get upset about if it had been forgotten? And again, guess, check and write it in the draft one page profile. This can both help us learn what's important to the person and what they need to have with them to be healthy and safe. By now, you'll have your first draft one page profile from what you've seen and the clues and the best guesses from information from other people. The next step is to check and review this. You want to check it with the person as far as you can and then with the people who shared their information with you. Sometimes records or assessments can provide information that's useful for us to check the support information, particularly if you have got permission to see these. There are person-centred practices that can help us both review the information on the one-page profile and to keep learning and adding to it as well. These are communication charts, learning logs and person-centred reviews. We all communicate through our body language, tone of voice as well as what we say. And we know that people have got lots of ways of letting us know when they're unhappy or upset as well as happy or excited. And it's really important that anybody supporting the individual knows this and we have a record of it on a communication chart. Learning logs are an important way for us to keep checking the information that we have about the person on the one page profile and to add to that as well. Sometimes, for example, in home care, the person who develops the one page profile does then not spend a lot of time with the person. So it's really important that carers use learning logs for the first month that they're supporting somebody new so they can learn more about the person. And this can be added to or change and update the one page profile. And a person centre review is a really great way for the person and others to reflect on what's working and what's not working. And this is also another way to check and develop the one page profile, as well as generating outcomes and actions together. So by looking for clues and by talking to and checking with the people who know and care about the person most, you can feel confident that you've got the best information possible for the person's one page profile. So now it's about making sure that the person's one page profile is used to ensure that they have what matters to them in their life and they're supported in a way that works for them.